In this Managing Asia series, we look at how companies from different industries are tapping on future trends to meet not only ESG goals, but also to build a sustainable business. I'm here in Tokyo, and in this episode, I speak to Kawada Technologies Chairman and President Tadahiro Kawada to find out how robots are changing the way we work. This is the Dawn Avatar Robot Cafe in the Nihon Bashi Business District of Tokyo. And yes, there is a robot barista behind the counter, but it is being controlled by a human. Tarahiro Kawada, the president of Kawada Technologies, is on hand to give me a tour and to help me interact with the Orihime Pilot Barista Robot, which is a collaboration between his company and Ori Laboratory. Today, the barista robot is being controlled by Mika, who is actually 350 kilometers away in Nagoya. Mika-san, I've had a long Hi. day. I would love a strong cup of coffee. Can you make me one? <laughs> by using robots as avatars, Karahiro san says it opens up new employment possibilities for people who are housebound, handicapped or elderly. He says it not only widens the employment talent pool, but it also allows for a more inclusive workplace. It smells wonderful. Thank you. Mmm, makes my day. <laughs> I know you have a passion for developing robots. Tell us more about this vision, this purpose that you have behind the robots that you okay. make. Well, especially in Japan, uh, you probably heard that uh, our population is uh, aging and where population is uh, uh, decreasing. So more and more manual work should be done by robots and humans should be doing more sophisticated, uh, more value-added things. For instance, this cafe that we're sitting is uh, Avatar Robot Cafe. And the people that work here don't even come in to, to work. There are people that cannot leave home, but they, through a physical robot, they can work. We have about 100 million such of people, um, handicapped or uh, getting too old, but uh, using the robotic technology, they can still work, and that increases the labor force. What's the percentage like of those people that use robotics in Japan? Do you uh, have a percentage? Still very small. Still very small. I mean, um, this Avatar Robot Caf Cafe is is actually the pioneer of it. This has been going on for about a year now, mm -hmm. this, this cafe. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, people are starting to see what, what a robotic technology can do to help the handicapped people work. And that is triggering into uh, elderly people as well. So I think uh, um, percentage will get bigger and bigger, but I do not have the specific number. Kawada-san, so we're here at your office, and this is the same robot we saw at the cafe, but this one, you're doing an upgrade. Yes, my engineers are working on not just for the coffee, but the customers can order other things other than coffee, like juice, so the kids can also interact with the robot. The rising cost of raw materials and supply chain disruptions is a worry for most manufacturers. Kawada isn't immune. So obviously, this is your latest robot. Yes. Does it cost more to build it? No, we, uh, uh, our engineers uh, worked very hard to reduce the cost. Uh, we, we designed m most of it, actually. Um, it's a modular design. That means you can just uh, take, take the arm off to replace it and... So it's easier to maintain. And, uh, but unfortunately, we have uh, now the uh, uh, price increase of microchips and, and many things. So uh, we're hoping that we can keep the price down. But uh, with this current uh, situation, it might be difficult some, uh, in the future. So do you think you might have to increase the price of your robots eventually? The price is not just about the robot itself. It's also the engineering and customizing for their customer. We've been working on a making packages, solution packages, to reduce the uh, uh, initial cost. 
But with this current problem with the supply chain and uh, material cost increase, it's tough to manage. But hopefully, um, as more and more robots are implemented in, in, in the workplace, uh, eventually uh, it'll, it'll reduce the price. You make and produce robots for big Japanese companies like Hitachi, Panasonic, Shiseido. To what extent do these robots help a company improve their productivity? Well, productivity, of course, you have to have a, a bottom line. But to me, uh, having a robot at your factory, especially humanoid robot, will empower the people that are there. And they can be more creative in how, how using such a robot. Usually, before, I think the uh, industrial robot was something that was handled by the technicians. And uh, workers would just say, oh, that's the way it is. But with our robot, uh, because it uh, it looks like their their colleague, and uh, how to work with this colleague to be more productive as a factory, uh, more people uh, come up with ideas. So I think that's the power of it, and and the productivity number will come after that. Is there a niche that you think your robots can fulfill that's not otherwise tackled by your competitors? Yes, yes. Um, here we are at this uh, robot cafe, and. Having a human shape is very important for, uh, say, uh, like mom and pop shops or, or restaurants. You don't want the industrial robots serving you coffee or food. I mean, it's kind of weird. Um, because it's a human shaped, it's a friendly looking and it's predictable in how, how it'll move. So, um, that is something that we would, we definitely have a niche. And I think we're excelling it. Mm. You run also a construction and civil engineering company. Are you using robots on the construction side itself? Are you planning to? Uh, yes, yes. We are working on it. My robot team will go to the construction site and uh, do idea exchange, uh, see the problem, and see what the uh, site people could not come up with a solution. Uh, collaboratively, uh, they're, they're starting to have solutions for them. So it's a very, very interesting thing. Uh, if we can do it at the construction site, uh, maybe we can do it at the bakery, we can do it at the uh, other coffee shops or restaurants. So I think the uh, uh, possibilities are endless. Just how profitable is the robotics business today? So last time I talked to you, it was uh, several years ago, uh, I hope by now it, that it will be standalone profitable. But with the, uh, with the pandemic, it, that did not happen, but it's getting better. We're having the team, robot team, going to the uh, construction sites and uh, uh, our factory that's making steel products. So uh, it's making the uh, uh, Kawara Technology Group as a whole to be uh, more profitable. And finally, as the fourth generation driving Kawara Technologies, what leadership will you provide to make sure the company has a prowess to stay at the forefront of robotics, manufacturing, and technologies? I personally think it's our people. It's the creativity of people communicating with each other, understanding the problem up, up the, the, the front of, of our businesses, and they come up with ideas. I'm the farthest away person from our customers. And my people that are taking care of problems, talking to the customers, they are the most important uh, piece of our business. So do you think you have the right people in place to take the company to its next level of growth? Oh, yes, yes. I, it's, it's going that way. We have, uh, I mean, we're a traditional Japanese company, so it's primarily male company, but we're starting to have more female employees that are creative, that they bring us values. We, at the Kawada Robotics, we have a French engineer, um, Indian engineer. So uh, diversity, uh, different ideas coming in, that's, that's the key. Kawada-san, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, Kristen. And that was Tadahiro Kawada, chairman and president of Kawada Technologies. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Don't forget to catch the next episode of Managing Asia. I'm Christine Tan. Thanks for watching.
brought to you by Credit Suisse.